Welcome back. Um, I'm OK Fixer, and um, I had a youth uh, that I know borrow this and uh, my uh, engine hoist, and he's brought them back. Uh, good man. I appreciate that. I don't mind people borrowing stuff, but uh, bringing them back, that's another thing. Uh, so he's brought it back, and I don't have an engine stand for my Volkswagen. And engine stands for Volkswagens have uh, kind of like a, a tube that come out either side um, and they attach on the uh, stud side and I say the stud side of the case and that's the case studs the eight in the center or six can't remember I believe there's eight uh, two, four, six. <laughs> six, okay. The, the big six studs in the center, I can't remember. Anyways, uh, so that you can flip it up on its side and take this half of the case off. So it only is supported by these, uh, these two bolts right here. Well, I, I, this, this one I have in there, actually it's a hole. I'm, I was doing some thinking is what I'm doing. So, uh, I don't have any bread. Uh, right now because I'm uh, winter time and it's slow and I'm not going to spend my savings and uh, You know, it's it's what happens every winter with me uh, Some people have guaranteed salaries. God bless you. That's great. <laughs> I don't uh, So it's hand-to-mouth and you have to save during the summer and The more you can save during uh, the summer for the winter if you don't spend it during the winter then you can apply it to something cool like a motorcycle or something like that for next year when you're flush and save over again. Uh, but anyways, uh, what I was thinking about doing is, I'm going to get in your way real quick, is uh, we have these uh, two right here and what we've done is we've reversed them and uh, so that they will uh, so that they will uh, accept a piece of pipe. Uh, and so I can weld a piece of pipe inboard, about like this, and then the event that I want to use this uh, uh, for an engine stand for something else, like a, you know, just a regular engine, and where it has four points to mount, I can just flip this over. Of course, this big, big piece of pipe will be sticking out towards me, but I can still make this work if I do that. So it's twofold. And if I weld a piece of pipe, yo and yo, and then on the end of those pieces of pipe, I can weld a piece of 3 16 material, a quarter inch material, uh, that uh, has a, a slight radius to it on the inside, and uh, a, nice, a nice couple inches of platform either side, weld it to that and to that. It should get me out of my flywheel. I could even weld it out farther outbound a little more and it will get me out of my flywheel and uh, and be able to mount it to this which mounts to the center pivot which I can use for the deal there so homemade halfway so uh, I don't know how much they are online I know they're more than I have in my pocket right now so uh, and I've got the time and uh, I've got some material and a little bit of electricity. Yeah, so uh, let's get a couple of pieces cut and uh, we'll get welding. First thing I did is I took my 3 16 and I got a nice square edge on that and uh, I put it up against this because this radius and this radius are going to be pretty close. Uh, well, you know, that's not going to be exactly perfect. Right, I understand that but I have to cut it out with an acetylene hacksaw, so it's not going to be very perfect to begin with. These cuts I can make with my, uh, with my uh, saw, uh, uh, chop saw, but the radius, I'm going to have to use acetylene, uh, a torch. So let's get after that. Now, when I was extremely poor, extremely poor, uh, and I wanted to do mechanical work, I wanted to do mechanical stuff. This is the first thing, first major appliance I bought. 
And I'll tell you why. You can cut with it. You can join metal together with it. You can braise with it. And you can heat things up to get them apart. It was, it was so versatile. Again, uh, leave this up to us, guys. We'll get it all taken care of. Now there's a lot of guys on notice on YouTube that do not use these. They don't have them in their shops. And I'm, and I'm curious as to why they don't have them. They're such a great tool. Uh, kitties, this uh, white hot metal that drips off of this, now that's going to be hot. So you want to make sure and protect yourself, okay? And I got myself a little splatter board right there so I don't fill my shoes up with it. this down a little bit don't worry that this radius is kind of wacky uh, we're only going to use part of the radius anyways uh, I've drilled a couple of holes uh, that these bolts are going to go through and these are the same size uh, that are going through the case so let's cut this in half and have a look at how it fits on the case well do we want to weld the pipe like here, so both pieces are here. No, 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 no. What you want to do is you want to splay it out a little bit farther. So if you weld your pipe, if you put your pieces on here and here, and you weld your pipe here and here, it gives it a little bit more stability and it gives it a little bit more room. Now, why am I using these pieces? Why not just put a piece of pipe on there? Well, in my opinion, I don't know how they've got them built. I haven't really looked at it very, very close. But if I weld a pipe on here and I bolt this down, and I bolt this down, it will give all this material a bite. It'll give it, it'll give it stability. If you put it just on one little, one little part right there, what you're working with is, is that little ear right there. And you get a lot of weight on there. Maybe it bounces. Maybe it holds. Maybe it doesn't. But I know that if I do it this way, if I do it this way, I will have uh, a lot more stability. And I will have a lot more purchase on this case. And that way I won't break an ear off as long as it's laying flat on there and it's not warped or anything. All right, let's, I, I, I like the size of these. Uh, these bring it out quite a ways. Maybe it's a little bit much. 
I might come in a little bit, maybe about that far. Well, let's cut a couple of pieces of pipe and uh, we'll insert our bolt in there and we'll uh, do a little welding. Okay, noise alert. almost the same size too. <laughs> Any idea why no one on the internet welds with these? No one welds with an arc welder anymore. Because an argon uh, MIG welder is easy. That's why. You want to try welding on something? You want to learn how to weld? Weld on, a, weld on a stick welder first. If you can learn on a stick welder, you will be like... <laughs> you will be like Picasso on a MIG welder. Especially a MIG, MIG welder on the bottle. It's like playing guitar. Don't pick up an electric guitar first. Beat your hands up on an acoustic. Then play an electric. You'll be like Hendrix. I'm in your way.
yeah, I'm like that. I'm going to uh, tack these here and here, and you can see we've got plenty of slack here and here to be able to center this. So I think we should be okay, but I'm going to tack them on there and see how that looks first. I have these tacked on a couple different spots. You kind of got to think about exactly how this is going to go on and kind of because it correlates with that. But there's a lot of movement there, so you don't have to be spot on. Okay, I made a huge mistake, and uh, so I ended up having to cut them back off, and I kind of put them on one at a time, and I just tacked them on there. So let's, uh, we're good now. We have this centered up. We got a little slack there, which is fine. And uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll take this off, put it in the vise, and we'll be able to seam it up a whole lot better.
There we go, that's not too bad. Not the most terrible welds in the world. There you are. Uh, the finish I put on it, it's a spray enamel on white hot metal finish. So it bubbles all up. <laughs> uh, I cut a little spacer down here for that. Just out of a little piece of pipe and a couple of washers, that tightens it up pretty good. Um, but you'll be able to, uh, it's, it's centered pretty well. Oh, it's not too bad. And you, you'd be able to work on it just as a, just as a normal. Yeah, your flywheel will fit in there and clear everything. and should be wonderful. Except for maybe that. Might not clear that. I'd have to cut out that. I don't know. We'll, we'll massage that a little bit, but at least I've got something now that I can mount an engine to. I think that'll work all right. There you go. All right. Uh, thanks for uh, uh, welding with me and turning wrenches. And uh, I hope you learned something. I did. And uh, see you next time. Well, to round out this video, I thought I would bring you an, a special treat. More gun porn. All right. Um, these three machines I have on this table here represent uh, something and see if you can guess what it is. If you say Russian engineering, you are correct. These represent just good enough. Remember when I told you don't let just good enough <laughs> listen to her end there. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> Just good enough get in the or, or, or perfection get in the way of just good enough. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> that was kind of funny. I ought to start this over, but I won't. <laughs> it's, it's a personal joke. Anyways, okay. Don't let don't let uh, uh, perfection get in the way of just good enough. And that was the Russian uh, Russian motto. Uh, these three machines also have something else in common. Ain't one of them made in Russia. Ah. But they were so good that other countries made them and used them as well. Okay, let's uh, start off with the cartridge. Well, let's start with rifles first. Uh, the rifles were designed around this cartridge. And this is a 762 by 39 And it's a very potent cartridge. And, uh, and so, you know, the Ministry of, of Warfare or whatever, they have this cartridge and they develop it and it has a certain amount of characteristics that they like and it flies a certain way and it's 30 caliber or whatever or 762 or whatever it you know fits the tooling of the day or or whatnot like that and uh, and so you know develop us a, a, a rifle around this so a guy by the name of uh, Simonoff uh, uh, Sergei Simonoff uh, developed this and this is his uh, is self load loading self loading carbine uh, of the Simonov system, so SKS. Uh, in Russian, I couldn't tell you what it is. It's uh, it's uh, uh, you got to have your yeah for the Soyuz Sovietsky Socialistsky Respublik weapons. You have to have boy. You got to put your mouth in the, yeah your tongue in the right right way. Anyways, so he developed this unit right here. However, this is a Chinese made, and uh, before I pick this up, I'm gonna. You know, notice that the bolt is open and, the, and it doesn't have any ammo in it. And the AK is the same way. There's my finger. Nothing in the magazines. The Macross empty as well. You can see down that. Okay, we want to make sure that we're not playing with live firearms. Okay. So this was developed in about '43, right along with this cartridge, and uh, and it's a fine machine. And it went into production in about '45. And the Soviets used it in '45 to replace their uh, PP or their their outdated uh, their outdated. Uh, geez, they was using them since 1800s. Uh, what are those? 7.62 by 5.4 R. Those great big Mosin Nagant rifles. And uh, this unit is it's it's uh, very good. Uh, it's a it's a it's a very cheap rifle to own. It's a very cheap rifle to shoot. It's very accurate. Um, 
depend on what state you are. Uh, some of them you can get bayonet lugs for, some of them you can't. Uh, some of your rifles have bayonets, some of them have uh, flash suppressors, some of them have grenade launchers, some of them have five round magazines or, or limited to five rounds. This one has a ten round magazine. But it's uh, fed by a stripper clip. Clip is a clip. Clip is a clip. Magazine's a magazine or an internal magazine, you know. Uh, this has an internal magazine, stripper clip fed, just like this. And you push the rounds down and it holds 10 rounds. Pull the bolt back and as fast as you fire it, it's quite accurate. And it's quite accurate out to, uh, you know, a couple hundred yards. I, I can't see any more to go shoot that far, but we'll shoot this and I'll show you. Uh, has a pretty good safety. Uh, it's very crude and very rough looking, but it's, it's, a, it's a fine machine. Like I said, it's heavy. Uh, it's very crude. These can be sporterized uh, with modern stocks and stuff. And uh, I had one that I bought for $99 and it was lifted from me. So I don't have that anymore to replace it. This one was $350 and I had a hard time finding it for $350. Uh, they're just, uh, they're popular and they've, they've, gotten, they've gotten outrageously expensive now. I can't imagine what a Russian one costs. Okay, the next, uh, the next firearm we have here, uh, this is your venerable AK-47. You've seen these all. This is the uh, Oftomat Kalishnikov Chitirisim. So, uh, Oftomat Kalishnikov, it, uh, it's an uh, uh, automatic firing rifle uh, uh, of the Kalishnikov uh, uh, designation, that means. And the Kyle is the one that, you know, it's like Simonov and, and, and Kalishnikov. They, you get, I, you, I guess you get to keep your your name on the back. Uh, it does have a, a, a little bit different than a, than a lot of AKs. This one uh, was made in Oklahoma City uh, and it was made by uh, Three Rivers. And Three Rivers did a wonderful job on this. And this is a replica of, uh, of the, uh, the uh, uh, Tabuk rifle that uh, Sodom's Republican Guards have. And a little backstory on this: uh, Steve Russell was our uh, uh, state representative for a while. I've known the guy, and uh, and uh, I know he made rifles. So I went down. And I thought I'd, I'd visit his shop, and I bought one. Pricey, uh, twelve hundred dollars for this. But it's a substantial rifle. It's the tooling on it's beautiful. Uh, there's no pin marks, no rough edges, no, uh, no sloppy fit stuff, birch furniture. Uh, it's, it's just a beautiful piece. Very heavy duty bolt, very heavy duty receiver. Uh, three position selector switch, if you know what I'm talking about. Three position selector switch. So, uh, uh, this, although it's not let me say this over again. This does not have the parts to be to be uh, fully automated, but it could be if you had the parts. And it does have a three-position selector switch, and that is the definition of a assault rifle. An assault rifle has a three-position selector switch and is capable of automatic firing. No matter what the media says, if it's black and it looks scary, it's not an assault rifle if it's a semi-automatic, okay? This is still a semi-automatic, so it's not an assault rifle. This came with a threaded barrel, and it came with a grenade launcher. Grenade launchers are really fun. You can put a dummy grenade in it and put, uh, put uh, uh, blank ammunition, pump them up into the air. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's got a grenade launcher sight. Um, it also had uh, a knife that attaches to the bottom here, and I don't have it any longer because that was lifted from me as well. Um, then it, it has the book, the original book, and uh, see here's the deal is uh, uh, Sodom's uh, Republican guards uh, didn't want Russian rifles because they didn't, they didn't match their expectations, I guess. And so uh, uh, this is called to book because he uh, uh, contracted uh, to book Saudi Arabia, a company there, to build them for him. And uh, when Russell went there, and uh, if you ever seen that book or read that book, We Got Him, uh, 
it's all about him and his uh, uh, gang of, uh, of uh, sandbox fighters over there uh, getting Sodom. Well, when they went to his, uh, you know, they had all these rifles and they noticed they were not they were not made by Ish, or they weren't made by Tula. They were made <laughs> they were made in Tabuk, and they were substantially better. And he wanted to take some home, and of course uh, they, they wouldn't let him. So he decided he would start making his own. So this is made by Three Rivers in Oklahoma City. Fine company, uh, fine uh, rifle. Uh, I suggest if you want an AK, boy, I tell you that's great. Uh, these are not the magazines for that gun. I'll have to find the right magazine for that gun, but the, it has a little catch here, so when you em empty your last, the bolt uh, stays open, which is another neat feature that AKs don't do. Usually after you fire 30 rounds, it'll get warm. So that's, a, that's another rifle right there. Excellent rifle right there. And this is a, a copy of... Uh, a copy of... Walther's design, uh, made by the Soviets, and this was made in Bulgaria. And uh, this particular pistol is called a uh, Makarov, uh, not Makarov, and it's not Putin, it's Putin, okay? It's not Vladimir, it's Vladimir, okay? You got to understand the Russians. When, when, when the Russians have their accent in the center of every word, okay? So it's Makarov, okay? And yeah, roll your R's. Good luck. Okay, uh, this pistol here is a copy of a Walther design. Now, I don't know if Walther had a, a fixed barrel, but this has a fixed barrel to the frame, which makes it extremely accurate in the proper hands. In my hands, yeah, you know, you can't, I can't see anything. Uh, these pistols, I had four of them, uh, but now I only have two because two of them were lifted from me. Okay. Um, I know this goes back together. There she is. Uh, the reason why uh, I really like this pistol, uh, this, well, let me give you a little history on this. This pistol, uh, uh, it, uh, you know, the original Russian pistol was a Nagant pistol, the, the brake action, and then uh, it was uh, the automatic uh, copy of Browning's design, and they called that a, a Tokarev. Um, and uh, it fired the 762 by 25 little bottleneck cartridge, which was quite formidable. In fact, this uh, replaced the PPSH, the Papa Shah, and both the Tokarev and the, uh, the um, uh, Papa Shah run on that 762 by 25 cartridge, which was a, a fabulous little cartridge, but uh, I guess the Russians didn't think it was, uh, it, it was killy enough, I guess, or whatever. <laughs> so, uh, this pistol replaced that Tokarev, um, and uh, it's eight plus one in the pipe. Uh, and what I like about this gun is, say, say you put one in the pipe, right? Okay, I got one in the pipe. Okay, now, how are you going to get the hammer down? Oh, well, it's got a hammer drop. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Hammer drop. Okay, that's a neat little feature. Pop her open. Okay, we're empty again, right? You see, nothing in there, right? Okay, okay, now. When you when you uh, when you keep one in the pipe, okay. So so you got it on safe and you got one on the pipe, okay. Well, you don't have to rack this gun because it's double action. So you just drop your safety, and the first one's like that. Then of course it'll rack it, you know, and the and the hammer will be back. So the next one will be easy, and it'll keep going like that. Keep going and keep going. This is chambered in nine millimeter Kurtz or a Makarov round, which is a 9 by 18 instead of 9 by 19 Parabellum. The uh, ballistics on this are better than a 380, but a little less than a 9. And what's neat about Just Good Enough here is Just Good Enough will run 380s. In fact, it'll run uh, 9 Kurtz, 380, 9 Kurtz, 380, 9 Kurtz, 380, 
with no trouble at all. <laughs> it's funny because it'll be bam, 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 bam. <laughs> and not jam. Show me another gun that'll do that. This is the only automatic I would ever carry if I had to. But I don't carry automatics. I carry revolvers because I hit every time. But uh, if I was to carry an automatic, I'm sorry, my Walther jammed. I'm sorry, my Glock jammed. I'm sorry, my other Walther jammed. I'm sorry, my Smith & Wesson's jammed. I'm sorry, my Kimber jammed. Okay, this has never jammed, ever. It's never piped. It's never, you know, not fed. And I've run lots of rounds through it. Never, never. You want me to tell you why it never would? Because if it did jam, if it did jam in the hands of FSB officer or cops and it got back to the Soviet officials, whoever designed this gun would go to the gulag. <laughs> so, that is a very formidable pistol right there. They used to be, in fact, every one of them I bought, $99 with a cleaning rod, a holster, two magazines, and the gun. 99 bucks. Good luck if you can find one for four and a half now. It's crazy. Nutty. But, but excellent gun, and, uh, and, and very, uh, very easy to use, very easy to clean, great design, uh, stolen design, but very great design. So, all these are, uh, are Russian. Uh, designed, but Bulgarian, American, and Chinese. So that's how great these are, is from one end of the world to the next, is th th the Bulgarians made these, the uh, Romanians made these, the Russians made these, all the Soviet bloc, East Germany made these, there's almost every uh, Soviet bloc country made those. All Soviet bloc countries made those and those as well. And also they were made in China. And I'm not like certain that those are not made in China as well. Chinese SKSs and China. Okay, we're out to the gun range. And uh, uh, I'm going to shoot the uh, SKS first and then the AK. Uh, I'm going to load probably three rounds at a time each time. Um, High-powered rifles, I don't like to, unless I'm sitting down and I know I'm in control of it, I don't like having a full magazine. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to go three at a time, seeing that I'm videoing. Uh, the wind is blowing pretty good. It went from 70 degrees to 40 degrees with the north wind at about 15. And we're facing right the north wind. Uh, so turn your volume down because uh, the wind noise will be crazy on this, so I apologize.
We'll have to go downwind and look, see where I hit, so it'll be a little bit. I gotta wait for these guys to stop shooting and the range to go cold. my target there. Ah. Yeah, the last, uh, the bottom ones, the bottom three that you hit, right? that was, the, uh, two of them were the last ones you shot. Okay. They make a little, they make a little device for this, but I didn't, or maybe I did. Let me look and see if I can find it.
yeah, that's uh, more accurate than the SKS, but it's probably not. I just don't have it sighted in right. All right, we're kind of on the other side, and we have some plates. And I'm gonna a little a little plate, uh, little steel steel plates. You know what I'm talking about, the ones out there. And uh, I'm going to uh, aim at the ends. These ones right here, right there, and should be able to knock them down. And we're going to use our Makarov and. Uh, Nine by eight, and it has a hammer drop, uh, so so you can uh, drop the hammer, you know, safe. And then it's it's uh, double action and it's single action as well. That's what I like this pistol. Is the first one's going to pull real hard, and the other ones are going to pull pretty easy. And uh, you got to be watch your back of your hand here because the slide will come back and bite you if you're not careful. Well, I'll try to do this without glasses. Nothing. There you go. <laughs> like I said, I'm not I'm not a very good shot. magazine has a little notch here which is very handy you can just hook it into the, the wood of the bench here and pull it up the magazine's uh, much easier to load you can use a lula on this too it's kind of nice so hammer back first. There you go. There you go. Takes a little time. Get used to it. But uh, I wouldn't want to stand downrange for me doing that. <laughs> All right, there's your Makarov pistol and uh, or Makarov, and uh, we will go home and clean these because that's uh, incredibly cold out right now. <laughs> so, all right, I'll be back home in a minute by the miracle of of uh, video. Being a good shot and being proficient are two different things. Um, I don't plan on getting in a gunfight with anybody, certainly not that far away, and if I was, I'd be running. <laughs> that would be my natural natural thing. My natural instinct would be to run away and hide. Now, if they came after me, that would be a different thing. But uh, always try to avoid conflict in a gunfight. Always go to cover, uh, you know, hide. So my, my ideal... Uh, 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 you know, distance would be probably, you know, two or three yards, maybe. So, let's try this again. I'm out. I'm out and I'm froze to death. So... Let's, uh, let's go back home and clean. All right, we're back uh, at the garage. That was a mess out there. It was very cold and very windy, and I apologize for the, the uh, boy, that was terrible, for the wind and the noise and stuff like that. Uh, it's the next day. Uh, I got back late, and I had to work. Uh, that work is always getting in the way, you know, getting in the way of your fun. Um why did I go out there on such a windy day? Well, every day you have to do something. 
and if you sit in front of a TV and do nothing that day, that's a day lost. You only get a certain amount of days. So, you know, every day do something. You know, if it's if, if the weather's bad, you know, put on some, put on a raincoat, you know, or, or put on a coat or, you know, do something. That's my whole thing. You don't have a lot of days, really, and, and uh, do something every day. Anyways, uh, today is, uh, next day is uh, uh, December 7th. It's Pearl Harbor Day, 2,800 people uh, died in 1941 uh, on this day, and it uh, plunged us into uh, war with Japan. Uh, and uh, also uh, today is uh, today is we're we're on our way to a championship. Oklahoma is go Sooners, and uh, they are uh, they have Baylor by uh, ten to zero. So in the first quarter, so and we can get back to the football game. <laughs> no, I gotta. I got to go through this, you know, I mean, you, you got a certain amount of time and sitting in front of a TV, I don't know, so. Uh, I wanted to show you this little device here. Uh, this is the magazine that goes for this gun. I didn't think it was because somebody was using it for hammer, but it, indeed it is the magazine that goes for this, uh, for the, this goes for this rifle. Uh, it holds the uh, bolt open, it has a little catch there and it, and it holds the bolt open when you, when you finish. Anyways, this is a Mag Lula. And it's uh, and it's made in uh, Israel, so it's it's been blessed by God already. So you know you, you're one up on one up right there. Okay, you can put your round in there, and you can go back and forth like this, and it's an incredibly easy. It's such a nice saver, and you're not pushing on things, and it's not really hard, and da da da, and it's so easy that your magazines load so easy you can unload them. Too. Uh, the same way, just by racking it back and forth. And I wanted to show you that. It's pretty cool. It's got a little Mag Lula. Lula. L-U-L-A. Mag Lula. Pretty, pretty cool. Make these for ARs. They make these for ARs also. Make them for double stack, uh, 45, 9mm, 380, single stacks, uh, all kinds of Mag Lulas. Uh, again, I love shooting these uh, because uh, you get the fun of shooting a high-powered round, uh, 7.62 by 3.9, uh, a very high-powered round for less than 20 cents a round, uh, and you can't you can't do that. You know, you buy a thousand rounds of this for less than 200 dollars, which is which is fun. Uh, a box of brass Remington is 20 bucks. So uh, this is the stuff that I keep. Uh, for if, if, if in the event that I would want to discharge this in the city for some kind of reason, if you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, this has got a steel core, and uh, when you shoot it, it goes through your house, and then it goes through the neighbor's house, and then it goes through the church, and then it goes through the school, and then it goes through the engine block of the car next door. So it, it doesn't stop. That's what I don't like about that. Uh, so you got to be, it's, it's not that violent, but you, you understand what I'm talking about. And uh, 20 cents a round. Uh, uh, this, uh, $15 a box, uh, this was at a uh, gun show, but I did not buy this for 15 bucks a box. I bought this as a lot, and it was uh, like $9 a box or something like that. But if you go to websites, you can buy the stuff, uh, Silver Bear, and you can buy Brown Bear for Macro for, uh, for uh, $11 and $12 or $12 and $13 a box. What's the difference between Brown Bear and Silver Bear? Uh, Brown Bear is a FMJ and Silver Bear is an FMJ also. <laughs> no, it isn't. It really isn't. Somebody's been putting the wrong rounds in this. Maybe they have been. Hmm. Seems like to me. Seems like to me. I'll have to look at that and see. That's all wrong. That's all wrong. Somebody's put the wrong box of ammunition in that in that. But these, uh, these are hollow points. In fact, by God, let me stop this and I'm going to find the right ones. I'll show you. Okay, uh, I admitted I was wrong. <laughs> it's not the color of the box. <laughs> it's, the, it's what it says on it. Uh, the Silver Bear nickel plated, nickel -plated case, nickel -plated case are uh, the uh, hollow points. Uh, these are a little bit more. These are probably $15 a box. But they're uh, great ammunition for uh, personal uh, personal defense, um, you know, because they're they're hollow points, so they work out really well. Uh, 
you know, in a defensive situation, uh, this just, you know, goes through the body and these open up and they don't go through the body if you was shooting in the body. <laughs> so, um, like I said, you, you, get the, uh, you get the enjoyment of practicing and shooting and, and even if you're not into the defense or hunting or anything like that, uh, your, uh, you know, your bang for the buck is uh, for, for these uh, three firearms is, uh, is way off the charts compared to a lot of, lot of other firearms. Um, so uh, next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to take these apart and clean them. And so I checked at the range and uh, we, we want to make sure before you clean your gun, got a funny story to tell you, uh, that uh, a friend of mine who is a rifle, pistol, shotgun instructor, as I, uh, oh, that's right. Sorry about that. Get that mag out of there unless you have it. Rifle, pistol, shotgun instructor uh, brings home a shotgun and uh, and uh, is fixing to clean it, left rounds in it, shot a hole through his, uh, through his ceiling. So you have to check all the time. We're all human and we only, we make mistakes because we're not robots. We're not machines, we make mistakes. And uh, you can't, you can't make mistakes with these because sometimes people make mistakes with these and, and uh, the mistake is someone's life. And, and uh, life is very precious to me and, uh, you know, take someone's life, you've taken away everything they've got and everything they're going to have. I, I heard that somewhere. And, uh, and it, it's, a, it's a detrimental thing. Uh, Dan, why do you got these rifles for? What do you want those rifles for? I, I might understand the pistol for a little personal protection. Ah, ah. Because I'm part... Uh, as well as every American citizen, a lot of them don't know it, but I'm part of the well-regulated militia. And, and, it, and the Second Amendment says a well-regulated militia uh, in, order to, uh, uh, in order for the uh, preservation or... Yeah, I gotta, I gotta remember how that goes. Uh, but essentially, in, in order for the security of a free state you have to have a well-regulated militia. Well, that's not the army, okay, because the army's controlled by the government, uh, so that would be silly. And so we're the militia, just as it was way back when. And, well, why do you want? You don't need an AK. Well, geez, that's something else. Well, uh, back in the 1700s, the, uh, the, the well-regulated militia had state-of-the-art state of at that time, and which was a brown bess, okay? or a rifled, uh, you know, uh, uh, black powder rifle with, with rifling in it. That was state of the art. They had no uh, automatic weapons. Now, uh, without great, uh, you know, regulation and great payment and great taxes and great weight, uh, you can get uh, a fully automatic, uh, uh, you know, rifle. Uh, but they're they're very dear, thirty like thirty thousand dollars. I have a, a friend of mine who has uh, a couple of them, and he paid very dear for them. And um, but he does have them, and he had to wait a long time and stuff. Now uh, that's state of the art, and we're not allowed that state of the art. So you know you got to think about this. Uh, the uh, government has uh, guns and bombs and planes and tanks and nuclear weapons and, and gas and, 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 and thousands of soldiers and tactics and da-da-da-da-da. And they're worried about some damned old SKS or some, some uh, you know, 30-round uh, magazine with some surplus freaking Romanian ammunition. That's just so ridiculous. But uh, as an American patriot... I am part of that well-regulated militia, and it's not the guns that they are worried about. It's not the guns that they are worried about. It is that we are legion. We are many. We are many. As Yamamoto said, behind every blade of grass is American with a rifle. That's what 
a obtrusive government fears, okay? So, uh, these guns here are for a rogue government. That's what they're for. And uh, I feel uh, every American citizen should have one of these machines and 500 rounds of ammunition. They should. They should. Because it's your rights. It's your, it's your freedom of speech. You like your religion, which might be none. You like your, your, uh, your LGBTQNZ, whatever uh, thing you want to do there. And, and hey, I'm not, I'm not, what, whatever you want to do, this is a free country as long as it's not, as long as it, you know, doesn't hurt other people. You know, you want to, uh, you want to continue driving your car, your electric car, or your, you know, enjoy the freedoms you have. You know, go to school and you, you can stand up and you can believe in your government and your political affiliation. You can, you can, you stand out on your environmentalism and you can do all that stuff. And you can do that stuff because we are a free country. And the reason why we are a free state is because there is a well-regulated militia. So get yourself educated and buy yourself a rifle. Now let's clean them. All right, it's important <clears throat> when you need to clean your gun, you take your ammunition off the table because that way it can't get mixed up with any gun and uh, it can't enter the gun also. Uh, so this one will be loaded later uh, after I'm cleaning it, after I'm done cleaning it because is part of my personal protection. Uh, another thing about these three guns is they're all uh, roughly 30 caliber and so you can use a uh, 30 caliber brush and a 30 caliber uh, uh, swab and uh, I use this little deal there. I bought these from from uh, uh, Harbor Freight and uh, there are several different sizes and those work really well too. Uh, it, it, how clean should your gun be? It doesn't necessarily need to be freaking uh, spotless, okay? I don't, uh, uh, you know, I think I've taken each one of these down once, uh, uh, really, and, uh, you know, I mean, absolutely clean it perfectly, but I, I just I just don't do that because uh, I shoot them a lot, and it's, it's, too, it's too troublesome to take and clean them all the time. Uh, I generally oil them and run a rod through their, uh, run a rod through the, uh, uh, through the barrel, uh, you know, swab, and make sure everything's greased. I make sure they're not dry. So, uh, you know, there's, there's things you can do, but, but, you know, absolutely making sure your gas tube is completely clean, and geez, I don't even take the gas tube out of that. Why? And I just, I just examine things, and yeah, they're not too filthy. I'll take and, I'll take and, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's just uh, too much, uh, too much trouble for all that, and uh, I guess you can if you want to. I don't know, what's that? What's that all about? Yeah, that's about worthless, isn't it? I wonder what that's for. I'll have to examine that. I don't think that's right brush at all. Hold on a second. I had forgotten that my uh, cleaning kit. Uh, it's it's in a different bag, so I'll have to I'll have to look at that. But we use this one uh, right now. This has a, a little cleaning kit in the back of the back of it. It's important that you don't stick your finger in the back of these because this is a Chinese handcuff, and I got my finger caught in there one time yelling for my wife for a screwdriver, trying to get my fingers out of there. It was not fun. It almost cut my finger off. And uh, these this has a cleaning rod uh, in it. The AK has a cleaning rod also and it's missing i don't know why so uh we'll have to <laughs> we'll have to look for that i think i probably took it out uh to clean at one time or another yeah that'll work yeah, you usually come with a uh, a little screw extractor and a brush and uh there you go let's uh take that apart too go and then come off in there and there you go and uh, I don't use uh, WD for lubricant necessarily but I use it for a solvent Let's see if I can find something to catch all this mess 
I know I have a rag there. There it is. And I use it for kind of a solvent. Some people don't use it for that. Some people use hoppy. Some people, you know, uh, if you're doing any kind of, I'll tell you what, with these, with these Russian, Russian made stuff or the Russian design stuff, if you're doing any kind of maintenance at all, it's okay. <laughs> you know, they're, uh, they, they, uh, you know, like it's like the it's like the Saudis and the uh, and the Arabs and the, and all that all those people over there they were uh, they were uh, uh, just simply taking a, a knotted shoelace and uh, and and <laughs> and running it in and out of the barrel a couple of times, uh, you know, with with some motor oil on the end of it. <laughs> so so you know anything you do here is going to be beneficial. Uh, you know, to your to your rifle. So I give it a couple of couple of couple of gizzes like that, and uh, I'll shoot a little bit on there. Like I said, I don't use this for lubricant. Uh, I use it for kind of a solvent, and uh, I might I might lube up the barrel. If if you're if you're poor, you don't have any money, you can use uh, you can use engine oil. Uh, it's a little thick, but if you mix it with uh, a little kerosene, I used to use engine oil and kerosene, and it seemed to work fine. We'll put a little hoppies on there, on that dauber. Oh, look at that's beautiful. Yeah. And uh, run that in there a couple of times. Oh, that's nice. Beautiful. <laughs> so, you know, taking and, uh, and absolutely making your gun spit shine, hey, if that's what you want to do, uh, you go right ahead. I just kind of give them a once over and make sure they got a little oil on them. A lot of people don't even do that. I know my father didn't. It seemed like it seemed like every rifle he had that I that I got was dry as a bone. Didn't have any oil on it at all. And uh, you know, got to lube stuff. Hey, you lube your bolt there like that. I have a I have a uh, a uh, a philosophy and the philosophy is uh, if, if it's not smoking when you're firing it it doesn't have enough lube on it so uh, so you're pretty good there yeah that seems to look all right oil on there there you go and uh, cover Dusting here and there. Beautiful. Beautiful. There you go. Oh my god, it runs great. So I'll probably go over the outside of that a little bit uh, with a little oil. Uh, I might pull a bolt out of this too. Uh, this, uh, let's see here, let's see how this bolt comes out. That slides forward like that. Yeah! This little lever here mm. pops up like that. And this probably. Oh, it's got a pin in it. Comes out like that. Let's see if I can do this. Hey, use the tools that came with it. That's a good idea. Can't exactly remember how that worked. Well, I want to beat on this with something, but I don't want to use that. Let's see if I got a yeah, hammer here. Let's see how this one comes apart. Hmm. Hmm. Comes out of there one way or another. There it is. It's got a little catch on it. Bring bolt. There's your firing pin. Yeah, it's a little dirty. I'll do a cleaning on that too. Yeah, that's that's when they start getting when they start getting gritty like that. I'll I'll take and go over them. Give them a little give them a little what for. So let me uh, give me a couple a couple of minutes here and 
And uh, let me put these back together and I'll say goodbye to everybody. All right, we can put this together. It goes on there. I know it'll go back together. There she is. Drop. Okay. Uh, load this up. This is part of my personal defense. Uh, in Oklahoma, you do not need a license uh, to carry a firearm. Um, you do not need to register your firearm. And uh, you do not need any training for your firearm. Now, that being said, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I need one more. Uh, that being said, uh, is that proper well uh, shall not be infringed upon okay that's part of that uh, should you get training yes should you get uh, eh, should you get training yes should you get uh, should you uh, take classes yes uh, should you get a license in my opinion yes because it's reciprocal uh, I have a license and it's reciprocal in other states if I fly to Florida or I fly back home to Michigan, I can fly with my guns. If I uh, drive back, it's also reciprocal too. You might want to check your state to make sure because when you go into the state of Chicago, you <coughs> uh, yeah, you can't have a gun there. Well, you can, but it's there's a bunch of stipulations upon upon how and why and where and when and who's it's and what's it's. So uh, to me, uh, it's a good thing that. Uh, in Oklahoma, uh, the citizens are allowed to carry a gun. Uh, they are responsible for that. So, you know, if you pull your pistol and shoot somebody, well, by God, you know, you're going to help be held responsible. So, you better get yourself some training uh, about how and when to pull that and when not to, you know, pointing it, that kind of stuff like that. So, you know, it's really important that you get the training. Uh, these are not toys, you know, but I wouldn't be caught dead <laughs> out of the house without one. So, load that up, drop one in the pipe, hammer drop. Got nine little bees faster than anybody else. There you go. Well, uh, thanks uh, for sharing the gun experience with me. Uh, thank you for shooting with me and uh, and listen to me rant about my views and such and uh, comment and uh, and uh, whatever on the bottom love to hear your stories uh, thank you again for uh, uh, being around the Volkswagen got my little Shangri-La there uh, I did a little painting of the gas tank my brother didn't like the color of it so that's why the hoods open and to let that paint dry uh, I love that little cardboard deal there it keeps it keeps everything from <laughs> from hitting the car, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's like, oh, bicycle, oh, whatever, yeah, you know, and it doesn't, yeah, it's great. So I really like that. And uh, again, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for sharing and liking and or, or disliking or just watching my channel. <laughs> All right, uh, more to come. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, bye.